Aivelina ki aloha ia o kou pakahi a pau i a kou mei ke ia hea hinei a o au i hono a kapono ai a he leo hea hea ke ia no kou kako mau kūpuna i nāna i home nei i a kako a pau. I a Hawaii i nui a ke a Hawaii i nui, Hawaii i iki, Hawaii i loa, Hawaii i po, Hawaii i luna, Hawaii i laro, i loko o kamuana o kanaro. Ue ka lanine, ue ka honua, ne e ka honua, ola i ka honua, ho ola ka honua. Kuo ka wa i rua o te tūpuna, ku pa a ke kanaka mauli, ti hei mauli ola. Aloha. Mahalo kumo. Aloha mai kako. My name is Thelma Shimoka from the Maui Office of Hawaiian Affairs located on 737 Lower Main Street, Suite 3D, Wailuku, Maui. As community resource coordinators for OHA, finding new ways to engage and connect with the community is of major importance and bringing to you this virtual mana in Maui Ola event is one of the ways in reaching out to communities. What we call it today, the new norm, you know us guys, we find ways to reach out as long as we do it safely. So to honor your time, this is the agenda we will be following. I'll give a quick overview of OHA's Mana i Maoli Ola workshop. The series introduce a, a few of OHA Ohana, then our present Kumu Kapunai, our presenter Kumu Kapunai. For those of you who registered, we will be dropping a survey to the chat. So please complete the survey your mana'o is very important to OHA's community engagement paya. And the big surprise is if you the first 25 completed survey, you get one makana. First of all, I'd like to introduce Maui Island trustee um, and chair of board, trustee uh, Carmen Hulu Lindsay, and to our other eight trustees, um, Okawai, Moloka'i, Lanai, Big Island, and Honolulu. Our administrator, Kapohana, Dr. Sylvia Hussey, interim, interim community engagement administrator, uh, director, Alice Silbonez, engagement uh, manager, Davis Price, my assistant uh, manager, uh, Misty o Polly Oreo, and I cannot forget our technician, Kyle Lee Yadal. I'm a hollow them for helping to promote this event. I applaud them too. They need recogni recognition too. You know us guys, uh, we love to share. Sharing is caring. So our office is currently closed due to the pandemic as staff has been teleworking with modified services. If you need more information, go to OHA website, www.oha.org, oha.org. We are able to answer your phone calls at 808-873-3364. And Roy, introduce yourself. <laughs> Hello, my Kako. Hello, my. I'm having dinner. <laughs> Typical, yeah. We got to eat before we work. <laughs> so, this is an opportunity for community engagement workshops or presentations of stories that empower our Native Hawaiian Lahui to help to build capacity in our communities. These workshops, presentations, or talk stories are reflective of all house strategic foundations and strategic directions. So, plus strategic their foundations include, I know our huge ohana, these foundations reflect the strengths of our Native Hawaiian communities. So with the Aloha Strategic Foundation or has four strategic directions, health outcomes, educational pathways, quality housing and economic stability. It is true our strengths that we can achieve well-being. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Kapono Ai Olitao. He can go over his bio. He is so good at it. Go ahead, Kumu. I really like to welcome you Oao kapono ai, um, he kanaka wale au. Um, just a humble gentleman that lives here in the island of Maui and in Wailuku. Um, I have an uh, honor and uh, uh, really a sense of uh, pride and ownership of uh, being able to continue to 
to Malama my Kuliana here on Maui and and try to do that to the best of my ability. And uh, it's it's uh, really an honor to be here tonight to share uh, some olel with you, uh, some that that uh, uh, have been heard before, some that you'll probably see for the first time. And tonight, our our talk story session is all about hulaki'i and. And really, it's it's in a, a time where that we get to engage in in what is hula ki'i because not not so many uh, get to to understand what that is about or practice what hula ki'i is about. So uh, we get a chance tonight to just kind of uh, um, you know hopefully get your interest in in uh, uh, engaging in this kind of art form and, and this kind of hula practice and and really an opportunity to hear uh, from some of our our amazing practitioners that, that have uh, chimed in tonight. I see um, a dear friend, uh, Mauli Ola Cook, all the way from Kauai. Um, nice to see you, Mauli. Um, I'll, I'll be tapping into you just in a little bit. I know that you might have to go to Hula with Empty Vicky, I'm not sure, but I uh, just wanted to make sure I send my aloha to you. Uh, also, I believe we'll have um, my Lelu Beamer, if, she, if she's not, um, in the middle of writing grants uh, because it's grant time <laughs> um, and and hopefully she'll be able to chime in as well later uh, but I really really uh, fond aloha to each and every one of you that have taken the time to to learn a little bit more about Ulaki'i to engage a little bit more about storytelling and um, uh, just Ulukahoi i ko'oko mau mana'o and hopefully it'll, it'll pique your interest and uh, uh, you know just help out with your imagination about storytelling. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and begin sharing my screen, if that's okay. All right, here we go. Okay, can everybody see? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, so, um, I'm gonna go ahead and view it uh, full screen. All right, here we go. So hula ki or Hawaiian puppetry, uh, and and these are two different uh, images that that allow for for uh, us to see where we're gonna go with our conversation. And hula ki is is one that that I learned uh, in my teen years. Uh, under the direction of Kumu uh, Kiola, Kiola Lake from Maui, as well as um, under also directions of Auntie Nona Beamer. Uh, so there you see uh, some some images uh, of Hulaki'i practitioners. And this one image to the right, uh, my right, um, is a picture of Auntie Nona Beamer um, with two of her haumana uh, dancing Hulaki'i. And, uh, if you look at, at uh, that image, you can kind of see that she has kind of a puppet uh, figure that is dressed up. And then to the left of my image, I see uh, a series of meahula in, in ki'i formation, uh, whether it be in a, in a noho or hula noho formation or in a standing a stationary stance. And so these two images we're gonna talk a little bit about and hopefully share with you some some uh, of the mele as well as some of the hula that are associated to these kinds of hula ki'i forms. Okay, oh, how do I get to the next one? Hey, ah. Okay, ko mana'u o hula ki'i. He wahi mana'u mai naku mamu So growing up on the island of Oahu, in understanding my hula resources that I was privileged to have I had access to. These thoughts were shared with me about hula ki'i, which involved many layers that transcended the art of hula into another realm of enhanced storytelling. Hula ki'i was defined to me as an art form of hula utilizing our physical body or the creation of an actual image. Where the beauty of the hula ki'i is incorporated with the importance of ha'imo olelo, storytelling, Oli, or Hawaiian chant, and the symbolism of Kauna, or the different lessons learned. So this image here is an image uh, provided by uh, Bishop Museum, 
And it is a famous, iconic image of Pa'akaula and his puppets. Um, and if you look at those particular ki'i, they are life-size. Uh, they are, uh, they look like uh, basically kanaka that are sitting on top of a chair. Uh, but those images are, are carved out of either wood um, or and or niu. Um, and and Pa'akaula is holding one that uh, is manipulated uh, by the hands uh, and, and really an iconic image that, that everybody when they think about Hulaki'i this is one of the first images that come up here's another image that comes up for many uh, this is an image of uh, and this famous iconic image of her uh, in a Hulaki'i noho stance um, and so the symbolisms of ki'i. Ki'i is translated by puhu'i is an image, a picture, an illustration, a likeness. Likeness features as that of a face are all prominent symbols that best represent hula ki'i. With the image of iolani luahine, her image is captured by her eyes that seem to captivate all that see. Her facial features are subtle, yet full of life and yearns for connection. It's one of the best, best things that um, I can only tell you about hula ki'i. It's, it's really within the eyes and within all the facial features. Because you're in such a, a stationary stance, um, your facial features and your body movement are going to be very key in how you come across in, in terms of what your story is. And Tinona on the right here. Um, with a hula ki'i that was made by my dad, Kumu John Kiola Lake, um, captivates the audience with subtle gestures of hula. And her ki'i comes to life as she becomes the background. And the ki'i is at the forefront, creating the duality of both the physical and spiritual realm. Her awareness to be one with the image brings all that are present into the story told that day. So when we think about ki'i, those of us that practice that kind of Hawaiian puppetry. Our goal is not to, to uh, be the person if the ki'i is out in the front. Your, your goal is to be the background and your ki'i is to come to life. Your goal is to enhance that ki'i that, that you are, are just that, that spiritual essence giving it, uh, giving that ki'i life. So hula ki'i, also utilizing the physical body, transcends our hula to a heightened awareness. Our dramatic gestures and our emotions, as well as our facial gestures, represents clarity of story and depth of importance. Yeah, many of us um, that have kupuna or that have older makua all understand that we, we love to talk with our hands and we love to make facial gestures and, and you know, um, we love to eat with our hands and, and much of our mo'olelo is talk with our hands. And so, um, very similar to, to hula ki'i, because you're in a stationary form, your use of your hands, your use of your facial features, uh, your use of your ha'i mo'olelo or your oli or your mele are, are what's going to be very important for you to come across in, in particular mo'olelo. Today's use of costume, designs, makeup, and enhanced technical training and chant exemplifies great balance of hula ki'i in this new time. Many of us um, don't get a chance to see hula ki'i performed in public much, um, well, today at all. And, and, you know, those of us that do practice hula ki'i, uh, it's not something that is practiced every single day. It's part of, it's part of the, the, the repertoire of hula that we have. It's part of the repertoire of mo'olelo that we know. And, and those of us that do practice hula ki'i understand the depth and the importance of that particular image or those images that are made and how to care for them. Once hula ki'i are created or puppets are created, um, they, they tend to have a life. They tend to have a wairua as well. So they're physically there as well as a spiritual presence to them. So make sure that we care for them just like our own ohana. <clears throat> the nature of our hula allows us to impl implement all of our senses, utilizing everything we feel, taste, 
touch, see, hear, and smell, we're able to enhance our emotions to create imagery that affects our emotions. Our images portray many different layers that affect each and every one of us differently and on many levels. Yeah. So really important for all of us that, that know hula or have heard of hula or practice hula today, uh, we all know that we're, we're, we're elemental people, we're sensory driven people. So all of those senses that we, we embody um, help us to, to dance our hula, help us to, to portray certain images. And these are really, really uh, something that every hula hula dancer strives to, yeah, to, to elevate that awareness of all of those emotions, yeah. Hula ki allows us to challenge ourselves in the area of storytelling. It pushes us to continue to use our imagination, to create images through our physical bodies or by our puppets or our ki we create. Now it's a little bit different than just hula, yeah. Hula ki, um, you become the storyteller you become the, the creator of that story and you, you make it come to life right away. Yeah. Um, different than just as a olapa or a ho'opa'a, uh, hula ki'i practitioners have to be able to do all of those things. Hula ki'i practitioners have to be able to dance the hula, have to be able to ho'opa'a if there is, have to be able to create the images around the hula ki'i and have to create the mo'olelo as well, yeah? Those practitioners, our modest and gentle approach to sharing this art form is very, very humbling. For we as adults, we tend to lose our sense of imagination, yeah? As we get older, what seems to get back to us as we become kupuna in age and in mind, yeah? So imagine many of us that have young, young kiki, they have great, great imaginations, yeah? And as we get older, Somehow that imagination level seemed to kind of went out the window for a while. Yeah, and then, you know, when you become kupuna, I don't know, that, that kolohe ness comes back or that, that, you know, those imaginations come back and you start, you know, all kinds of little, little interesting kinds of conversation come back and you, yeah, all of those images come back and you're, wow. I don't know what happened from the time that you're keiki to the time that you're kupuna, that, that space. For some of us, we gotta kinda reconnect to that imagination, yeah? So, as a hula dancer, as a hula practitioner, um, it, that's one of the things that always allows us to see is imagery, to see those kinds of um, physical things that we can, we can picture in our minds, we can picture uh, as a hula, and we can picture as, as a hula ki as well. So our young ones, our young ones are always continuing to challenge us in the use of our imagination daily. Thus enhances our approach to storytelling, yeah? <clears throat> so many of us that have young babies or young keiki, um, you know, we, 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 our voices change when we talk to them, yeah? Our voices kind of, they, they, they go up a little bit or, or your, your tonality totally changes or, you, you become a whole different person when you're talking to the bebe and trying to, to um, play with their, their, their emotions and to enhance that, to, to get a smile, to get a giggle, or to get just a gesture of, of a honey honey. Yeah? Um, that, kind of, that kind of elemental thing is, is amazing. And so, so if we can continue to enhance that in, in the area of hula ki, um, this is the area that our kiki continue to challenge us in, and it's it's really fun. Yeah. Oh, color me. Wait, what happened? There we go. Okay. So, hula kii, uh, the fibers and the materials that we use today. Um, so, natural fibers such as neem, popo, cotton, natural plants, buttons. Feathers, paint, and many others. Creating hula ki is a very stimulating, and the use of different fibers, materials allows us to play. Yeah, how many of us um, remember, uh, you know, just just going to uh, gather shells down at the shoreline and, and utilizing them in an art project? Yeah, how many of you guys remember going to to gather maybe coconut husk around the tree and and seeing that? Oh. 
You can make one on an angel for Christmas, for your Christmas tree. Yeah. Um, those kinds of thoughts, they, they're not today's thoughts. Yeah. They're the, the, they're the thoughts of our ancestors. They're just showing you, yeah, look, look at around you that you have all of these things to, to be able to, to grab from and utilize. So um, use them. So it creates us, allows us to play, to interact, to become part of a tradition that historically dates the hula ki'i at around 1820 on the island of Kauai during the reign of Kaumuali'i. So during that time is, is, is when we, we see hula ki'i actually being uh, something that, that is out in view. Yeah? So understanding that our kupuna utilize materials available to them to create, to continue to tell stories. This thought, thought process hasn't changed much but it has become part of our everyday hula traditions throughout Hawaii. With much thought and preparation, hula practitioners continue to showcase our stories, chants, and honored places for centuries. The art of hula ki'i continues to be developed and with some families, part of a tradition that is passed on to their students. Now we have um, an amazing kumu on the island of Oahu. His name is Kumu Auli'i Mitchell that uh, has has hula traditions of hula ki'i that are passed on in his ohana. And he's been an amazing kumu to be able to, to share his expertise with others that, that practice hula, hula ki'i. And we're very fortunate to have those kinds of kumu still around, willing to share. Yeah. So I wanted you to take a look at these pictures here. Uh, these are, are again, different designs of hula ki'i from, from the days of our kupuna uh, to now. So when designing a ki'i or a puppet, some of the basic areas to look into are keeping your image relative to your story. Yeah. Again, when we talk about hula ki'i, we're talking about mo'olelo. We're talking about um, the ability to, to enhance that mo'olelo for, for the imagination to grow in that story. So keep your designs relative to your mo'olelo. Keep your design simple to move as you will move along with the image. Or you might be the image yourself. Sometimes images take on the facial features of the creator or those of you that are familiar with. Yeah. Utilize your materials to enhance your ki'i, not to distract from the ki'i. Understand the value of imagination and what your mind can bring into shape. So we look at these images to the left. These are images, again, um, images of Pa'akaola's images. Um, this one on the bottom here is another one that I believe is found at Smithsonian. Um, but these images are, are quite amazing. If we look at the days of our ancestors and the days of our kupuna showcasing ki'i, you can kind of see um, what at that time they they are um, they are looking at yeah the lole if you're looking at the lole itself the the clothing or the attire and that top key to the left it has a, somewhat of a, an attire that is covered up yeah the one on the bottom there um, it it looks like um, an image that is just carved on a piece of wood. And uh, the rest of the image you cannot really see, but you can see Niho that is that looks like um, shark's teeth. So utilizing all of the different things that are around them at the time. The key to the right there in the right corner. This is a key that was created again by Kumu John Kiola Lake and gifted to Auntie uh, Nona Beamer. Um, and I believe this image comes from Hula Preservation Society from Mailelu Beamer. And this image, if you look at it, is utilizing the, the same ideology of hula ki'i by just utilizing today's materials. Um, the, the facial features itself is utilizing probably a hot glue gun or some sort of glue to, to uh, make sure that those, those natural fibers or natural pupu are put in place to create the eyes, the nose, and the waha, the mouth. And then also you see some, some probably some black, maybe a marker there to create the eyebrows, maybe the, the, the little pupils for the, the maka. 
Um, and then you see a, a lei, which might look like a lei kukui, I believe, uh, that is also glued onto the, the neck of that particular key. Um, and then the hair is, it looks like raffia. The lei po'o looks like some other kind of um, modern day fiber. And then uh, the actual dress itself, the, the hand that, that you see on the key itself, it's kind of like made out of this, I'm not sure, like, I, I want to say velvety kind of material, that kind of clothy material. And then the outer layers of the kihei and the pau looks like a poly cotton kind of uh, material that is, is stamped with ohe kapala. So utilizing all of the different methods that our kupuna would use in terms of fibers gathered, in terms of other kinds of usages of, of kapala, but just using, you know, the, the modern day uh, accessories that are available to us. The, bit, the picture on the bottom there on the right is, is of, a, of a workshop done um, uh, with some kane and, and they made images that, that were more so self-reflective of them. They look like, some of those images look like them. So uh, we took a picture and we kind of all got a good giggle out of it. And, and you'll see that, that when you go into workshops, um, the main, you know, the first thing that Usually you, you go into a workshop and you want to make something, but as you create it, it, it kind of comes out with your own kind of unknown, your own kind of you know, nuances to it. And then after a while, the, the, the image starts to look like you. Oy. Okay. Here's a beautiful picture of Auntie Nona uh, in her younger years. And as you look at uh, that particular image again, uh, the lole and the attire of the lole um, kind of puts you in in the thought of the, the time and the, the space of where they're at. Um, very covered up and and the ki'i itself uh, is very small. Uh, it's probably a finger puppet, yeah? And, and the rest of it is, is just her lole. So really um, very small, very enhanced picture of that ki'i, but Auntie gracefully goes ahead and, and is able to make that key come alive and her gestures are just beautiful. Again, these two images here to the right are images uh, found of key of the Smithsonian. And um, if you look at them, they, they, they are carved out of wood, but they have some amazing facial features. Yeah, the eyebrows are really big, really broad. Uh, there is a gentleman on the bottom that has a really interesting mustache, and then the gentleman at the top has a interesting mustache and goatee kind of kind of going on, and and you're wondering, wow, what was that mo'olelo all about? And you wonder what, what kinds of stories would have came out of that particular ki'i. Yeah. So this is just a real quick uh, mahalo to, to uh, those that, that have been uh, really, really great uh, parts of my journey in this particular area of Ki'i. Again, always uh, taking in account to mahalo our kumu and our kupuna um, and those that work in this kind of field. And so mahalo kumu keola lake, uh, anti nona beamer, viki ho takamine, kumu moanalani beamer, mauliola, Bishop Museum, Hula Preservation Society, and Kumu Moan, um, and many other Kumu that have been able to uh, really pave the way for, for many of us practitioners today, uh, as well as Kumu Auli'i. Yeah. So, um, this is the, the end of one Kumu. Is, I'm going to pull up another one for you just a second. Let me try and see if I can uh, put it up right now without, without losing you folks. You guys can still see. Yeah, okay. Phew. All right, here we go. Okay. Um, how do I view this thing? Okay. All right. So we're going to go all the way to the very top here. Um, so we were talking a little bit about hula ki'i and uh, hula ki'i workshops. And... 
And really, uh, that's where, where imagination comes to life for all of those that are engaging in these kinds of workshops and, and really stimulating and good fun because you can come up with all kinds of stuff, yeah? And so um, these three specific images are, are hula ki'i and then uh, they are all specific to, to a workshop that, that was uh, part of uh, Kumu Auli'i Micho, Mauliola Kok, and uh, Mailelu Beamer, as they came over to, to the island of Maui to share their talents and their expertise uh, with, with all of us that were involved in these workshops. Yeah. So, very beginning. Again, fostering imagery from Mo'olelo. Um, and if we look at, at Hulaki'i being created, um, is being created because these students understand mo'olelo. These students are understanding the story uh, of what they're engaging in at the moment. Uh, so if you see uh, this top picture to the left, um, this is Kalele uh, Kekaoha Schultz, and that is an image of her ki'i uh, that is in front of her. Um, and the image of those kinds of ki'i are, are quite, quite impressive. Um, and it's quite can you hear me? Excuse me, Kopono Ai. This is oh, I this is Analu. We cannot see any of your images. Okay, Kalamai. Let me try again. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. See, I told you I was gonna. I was probably gonna mess up. How's that? You guys can see now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sweat in over here, Kalamai. <laughs> All right, uh, so again, hula ki'i workshops. Um, this image uh, is an image or three images that, that are part of a hula ki'i workshop held here on Maui and really fortunate to, to have Kumu Auli Imicho, Mauliola Kok, Mailelu Beamer come over to the island of Maui and help share their expertise. Um, so again, all of these workshops that Kumu is showing you is all pre-COVID, so um, don't be getting into a, into a hiffy fit if you see all of these images and wondering, hey, how come those guys are all getting together? This is stuff that was done a few years ago or a couple years back. Okay. Um, so again, hula ki'i is, is an amazing um, part to be able for you to just jump into your imagination and see uh, what the possibilities are. Okay, uh, here we go. So the very uh, beginning of creating any kind of hula ki'i, it's all going to stem from mo'olelo. It's all going to stem from, from a reason why you're going to create a ki'i yeah, or a story. Yeah. So I'll share this as we go along. And because I believe I see one of the students who is a creator of this particular mo'olelo here. Um, and, and we'll have her... Um, talk story in just a little bit. Yeah, and then she have to get off her Hanukkah lane. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the, the workshop that this particular piece is held at is in the Aina of Kapokia, the Aina of Kalaka Ihonua. And it is in regards to, to that space and the surrounding areas, uh, really regards to a very impressive um, growth of how that is out there. And so, um, again, when we're fostering images, it's coming, it's coming from Mo'olelo. And so these ki'i that are being carved are under the direction of Kumu Auli'i Micho, who is right in the center to the right, yeah, uh, right here. And and many of these images are, are are done by these students themselves with uh, with his amazing uh, gentle instruction and encouragement. Uh, an amazing kumu to see uh, him work his magic with, with students that um, are really ready in Makoko to learn. And so if you look at these images, these are all images of ki'i that are carved out by by Haumana of Nahanona Kulikio Pi'ilani here on Maui. And, and as well as Kumuoli Imicho. Quite impressive, yeah? 
And again, when we talk about imagery, if you look at the one that Kaleli has, and when we talk about Ki'i, yeah, almost, almost identical, yeah, the, the Ihu. Look the Ihu, look the nose, look the nose. Yeah, so when I look at these kinds of things, I, I really think about, wow, they're really carving images that are, are, are peely to them, yeah. And again, that, that's the, the image of Ki'i, it becomes part of your Ohana, becomes part of you, becomes part of your Wairua, your, your spiritual essence as well. Yeah. Again, Ki'i is not done on your own. You, you always make sure that you kako'o one another and you pai pai each other. Uh, this is Uncle Bill Garcia. Those of you not know Uncle Bill, um, he's an amazing, amazing man. And then uh, again, this is John Kahawai'i uh, working on a hula ki'i. Um, I believe, I think that that is Uncle Bill's hula ki'i that they're, they're working with. I forget exactly the type of wood that they're utilizing. I know it's not how, um, I wanna say it's called balsa wood. Uh, it's, a, it's a lighter kind of wood that is able, you're able to carve out. But one thing you know that, um, that I was told is that when you carve out something, yeah, you kinda just take out chunks because you kinda put that back, yeah. Like you kinda glue them back. Yeah, so you, you work slow, steady, and, and you see these images that come to life on, on that piece of wood. Um, the image over here to the right, this is another Ulaki'i, I think this is uh, Nalani Padluski. Um, and again, very similar, the, the facial features of this ki'i is very similar to her own Alomaka. Um, so really, really nice to see. Yeah, uh, this image to the left, my left corner, your left corner, I hope, uh, is an image that was carved out by Kumuauli'i. If you look, he's utilized uh, the alaya to create the dye on top of the, the actual kino. He's also utilized the pupu or the, I want to say, is it the mother of pearl shell um, to create the maka. And then um, this ki'i gets some muscles, look like. Get some pretty defining muscles on this ki'i. Um, and then it is um, wearing a malo. Yeah, this, this ki'i is wearing a malo. Um, this ki'i here, this image right here, I believe is carved out by, uh, is it Lani? Yeah, Lani Eckhart Da Ai Pololi Ka'i. Um, and her ki'i is an amazing image. Uh, it has, um, her image is based on, on the image of the mo, um, and so uh, quite amazing uh, tail features that this ki'i also has. Uh, the images here, these are carved out by uh, P.E. Mauna Aiwahi to the right, and then I want to say um, Kamaile Noneza, Maile Noneza to the left. I hope I'm correct on that. Um, again, utilizing the Ayla or the, the Kalamai, the, not the Ayla. What am I trying to say? The, the red clay. Poinaya, um, Kalamai. Uh, to help create the, the dye of that red effect um, for the Kino. And then if you look, there's this really interesting yellow. I believe that's Olena. And then also these black features. I'm not sure exactly, I want to say kukui, but I might be wrong on that. Um, again, the, the, the attire that the ki'i wears, yeah? Um, sometimes the ki'i is not only, yeah, not only without lole, but it has lole. So you really look at, at um, the kumu, and the kumu is the one that has um, prepared the, the lole for each and every one of the ki'i. This ki'i, I believe, is, is it Paul Robinson or is this Kekai Robinson's one? Kekai, okay. Um, and and quite an amazing ki'i. I believe this piece of wood is, is it really, really? Yeah, really, really. So you can see the different grains on this particular kind of wood versus the, the grains of um, balsa wood, yeah, a little bit different. 
Um, these, these particular ones were gifted by Pumu Auli'i to, to the Robinsons. Um, and they, they both have, I believe, uh, a piece that is, uh, we're separated, but we're at, at one point one, one la'au. Is that correct? Okay. Oh, yeah, no. All right. So, talking about images and talking about mo'olel. So this, this mo'olelo I'd like to share with all of you because many of you folks have heard it. Um, and it's a mo'olelo that comes out from the island of Oahu in an area of Manoa, uh, the area known as Punahou. Uh, and, and the mo'olelo basically goes that during the time of famine, there was a, a couple, a uh, kupuna couple. Um, the Kane's name was Mukaka and the Wahine's name was Kealoha. And every day during that time of famine, Kelo had to walk uh, many, many, many miles away to gather wai. While her kane went up Mauka, up in Manoa, to, to gather whatever mea'i that they could uh, attain for that day. And every day it was like that. So Kelo would walk to go ahead and gather wai, and then she would... Uh, pack her awamo and carry it all the way back to to their space in in that place known as Puna Ho. Um, and then one evening um, they're sleeping and Kyoloha has a dream. And in the dream there is a kane that arises in her dream and says, Kyoloha, outside your hale there is a puhala and underneath that puhala there is water. So she wakes up her kane and um, she tells her kane about her dream and and you know her kane says you know ah ole, nothing about that dream it's no way yeah and so they continue their day the same thing the next day and 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 mukaka has that same dream and in the dream it's mukaka outside your your hale yeah and that underneath that puhala is is way. And so, so Mukaka wakes up his wife and says, you know, I had the same kind of dream and, and they, they both get, get really excited to go ahead and begin this process of figuring out what their way is. So they go about their, their protocols in, in Pule, they go about their protocols in gathering. So they gather their red fish down in Waikiki and they come back, they prepare it in an imu and then they give it as an offering, as a ho'okupu to the puhala. And then they begin to pull at the aerial roots of the puhala. They don't see anything, yeah? And they, they kind of get flustered and, and they continue to, to wonder if this is just an empty dream. Um, again, Kealoha encourages her kane and that seems to be the, you know, the sticking point to this mo'olelo is to listen to your wahine. Yeah, listen to your wahine because they probably know more than us kane. Yeah, all the time. Okay, so Kealoha encourages her kane again to go ahead and hooky. And so they go and they begin to hooky the area roots and slowly but surely uh, there is this vai that begins to percolate underneath this tree. And, and this is the mo'olelo that comes out of it. And, and it's known as Kapuna Ho. And I'd like to share with you that particular hula ki'i. Um, and if you give me just a minute while I get my ki'i makoko, um, we will begin uh, this particular mele. Okay? So I'm gonna share with you my, my lovely kialoha, my image of kialoha. Yeah, she hasn't been to the spa lately, so her hair is a little bit, she's been kind of COVID bound. Yeah. Say, aloha kako, Leila, ea no kimele. Ai, ai ai punaho, waia o kanelo. Ai ai punaho. Why I walk on the road alone? I ain't Why I walk on the road alone? I know I 
kahle ana e ini ikhaponole ahiro kahle ana e ini ikhaponole ahepono khau ige o o e a me I have not heard Waya o khaniru halai na yara hai yara hai ah hai hinano thane o u kelo ha mikai ah Okay. Oh, yeah, no, this is Kealoha. So if you look at this particular image, um, Kealoha was created many, many moons ago. Um, and as you see, her image of her hair is all natural fibers. She also has some hulu, some feather. See, utilizing the raffia for her hair, as well as some of... Um, I believe this is, this is, uh, I want to say Pele's hair in the back here. Yeah, some old La'i, dried La'i. So she has, you know, she has some dreads going on, but she's all good. Um, her maka is, is made out of pupu for her waha. She has an ihu that is made out of uh, hala, the hala seed. Yeah. Her eyes are made out of kukui. And then pu'u for pupils is uh, this white coral pu'u. Yeah, and then her eyebrows is the, the aha or the senate cordage. I'm not quite sure if you can kind of see. Yeah. Her complexion is, is that of a sunburnt kissed wahine. Yeah, and she has no wrinkles being 100 years old. She's pretty good. Yeah. Um, again, her lole is, is that of a, a polycotton fiber uh, that we utilize with, with kapala that is part of our halal. Yeah? And so when we think about images, again, very simple, very, very easy to do, but, you know, again, specific to mo'olelo. And, and this is one that, that we continue to share. Uh, with many of our Hamana that have learned Hulaki. So, again, for Punaho, um, today is a, again, a very famous school um, known as Kapunaho or Punaho School. And I believe part of their iconic symbols of that school is the Puhala. Yeah, so there is a Puhala there that is close to their Halepule, which is in reference to this particular Mo'olelo known as Kapunaho. And underneath there, the springs and the water still continue. Yeah, so as, as Kealoha and Mukaka moved those aerial routes and found that the springs returned, and then they were able to, to return to their harvesting of, or planting of their crops and, and not having to walk so far to gather water, uh, but being able to sustain themselves in, during that time of famine. And so really the, the engaging part to all of this is to listen to, to all of our kupuna, listen to, to our wahine, and, and really uh, pai pai, yeah? the, the, the efforts of pai pai, um, kako kekai kekai. Yeah? So in the back of this kind of piece, this kind of hulaki, um, there is a, a hole, I'm not sure if you can see, there's a hole that your fingers would go inside in order for the hula ki'i to be able to uh, be manipulated, yeah? So the hole is inside and, and the ki'i can kind of be manipulated 
either with one finger or two fingers. Kumu has two that fits right inside, so it can manipulate a little bit easier. Yeah. So again, in that manipulation, uh, really takes time to to really be mindful about your ki'i and how how you and your ki'i interact and how this ki'i can become you know very alive at, at any given moment. Yeah. So. Kiala is feeling a little bit naked. Her lole was taken away from her. So we're going to put her back. Okay. Now I'm going to introduce you to Mukaka from that same Mo'olelo. Um, he's, he's a little bit different. Yeah. So this is Mukaka. And if you can see, he's, um, you know, you get, you get one big maka and one not so good maka. He probably couldn't see that well anyway. His waha and his his umi umi is made out of pupu as well as this uh, Pele's hair. His ihu is again another pupu. All of it, all of this maka area is pupu. And then a little bit of hulu for the eyebrows. I don't know what happened to this eyebrow. I think the glue wouldn't, wouldn't come off on this eyebrow. So uh, either that or you just wouldn't shave them. Um, and you know, he get pretty cool white mo mohawk. I'm not sure if back in those days they had white mohawk, but this kupuna can rock that mohawk. And then again, um, you know, a kakao feature that many of our, our kupuna in the day would have. Um, so his, his part of his maka is, is ele ele, and the other part is his sun-kissed tan of, of the sun of that area. Yeah, so this is Mukaka again. His lole is very similar to Kialoha, which is that yellow uh, lole again, um, creating that particular lole for for this kii. Okay, so hey Ano, I'm gonna put you guys back. And so funny, you know, when when we have kii, we we tend to, or well, I tend to. I'm not sure about any of my other students, but. Um, I tend to have conversations with them, and my wife thinks I'm a little bit, little bit off just having that kind of conversation, but that's okay, because you always want to be able to take them out of their eke and, and dance with your ki'i and, and hula with your ki'i. So just a note to all of my homana that haven't danced with their ki'i in a while, take your ki'i out, yeah. So this is where I'm going to ask um, Kekai to, to come and chime in a little bit, if you don't mind. Um, this is the next melee that uh, we'll be showcasing. Um, but I wanted her to kind of just give her her take on this mo'olelo or this mele, uh, Um I'll give you the backdrop of the assignment. Um, over in Waihe'e is an area known as Kealaka'i Honua that our Halao has been um, working on and, and developing mele and pule for. And so part of the, the assignment was to create new mele for the surrounding areas. And, and with that, this is one of the mele that were created. So I'm going to let Kekai, Aloha Kekai, you guys can all see her. Hey, aloha kumu, aloha auntie Tama, all our kumu, and aloha and naho maka maka. Hi. Hi. What a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to speak on hula ki'i and, you know, I guess um, very first thing that is to be said is mahalo to kumu kapona ai um, because um, he is the kumu that has uh, taught us uh, this art form. Um, and he is a kumu that challenges us uh, to <laughs> really um, grow um, in these, these ways uh, specific to the practices of, of our lineage as a halau and, and in the ways of our kupuna. So um, kukahawakea came about because of an assignment that was um, to, uh, given to us as a, as a group um, and the assignment was to um, write a hula maiyaku, a hula right. mai. Yeah. So the assignment was to create a hula mai um, with 
the um, areas of uh, Waihe'e and Waihu, that boundary area, and the uh, um, you know some of the names of the areas Kapoho, Kapokea, and you know our our Heiau, um that we so treasure, um, Kiala Kaihonua area, and in writing a hula ma'i, it was very interesting. Um, you know, you typically hear them about ali'i. Um, and in this uh, case, we had the opportunity to create hula ma'i for Aina. And Aina, um, in a way that allowed us to put those words out in, out, that um, we look forward to, to fruitfulness of, of that Aina. And so with that in mind, um, you know, I, I wrote this Oli Ku Kahawakia. And it, uh, because my, my um, very intimate, very intense experiences uh, at Kapoho and Kapokea happen to be around a particular Hau Grove. Um, the history of that is in the 1946 flood, that Hau Grove was growing near the Kahaone, uh, near the beach um, and the ocean side. And in the tsunami, um, the tsunami picked up the Hau Grove and it swirled it around the marshlands of Kapoho um, and it moved it up Mauka. Um, and so to this day, the Hau Grove that once in the 1940s existed near the sand now exists on the sand dunes of Mauna Ihi. Um, and it's prolific, like Kumu has said, um, and it is um, Akia it is like a very long, very, um, uh, <laughs> so just thinking about hula ma'i, kala ma'i. <laughs> so anyway, a lot, of um, <laughs> lot of imagery, a lot of hula ma'i in the imagery in this uh, particular oli, a lot of metaphor uh, that was used that likens this, uh, the movement and the swirl of that how um, the movement of that how growth to where it now lies on Mount Ihi and that Pu'eone, um, which is, you know, sand dunes are quite often um, the metaphor for like the length um, and beauty of the thigh area. And um, anyway, so that's what I have to <laughs> share about that. But, you know, I really also want to thank Kumu um, Auli'i Mitchell for um, sharing with us his tradition of carving ki'i and also for the gift of um, really, really that he provided for my husband. So we have a pair that was made from, from one branch of really, really, really. Um, and so mahalo to kumu auli'i, mahalo to our kumu um, hula ki'i, kumu mauliola and, and kumu maile um, for the opportunity and you know my undying aloha for our kumu kapono ai. So. Yeah. yeah. Mahalo. Okay. Mahalo. Thank you. Mahalo. So now we're going to go ahead and um, this is a good segue into the actual hula ma'i itself. Um, so we'll show it for you and I'm going to stop share this one and pull up the video and then start share again so um, you can all see see them because I don't like uh, it happened again but guarantee probably going. Okay, here we go. Share screen, Kumu. Okay. You guys can all see. Hiki, keike, I. Okay, my kai. So I'm going to blow them up now. Okay, here we go. All right. So this is the Mele Ku Kahawakia.
uh, okay, Kalam, I, I'm not sure if the video is a little bit uh, funny, kind, but I hope it, it was able to be seen all the way. Yeah, okay. All right, so, stop share. Kalam, I'm gonna pull up the other screen real quick. Here we go. Okay, coming back. All right, so that that was another hula ki'i again, uh, recently created, maybe about, was it I, two years ago now? Roughly, yeah, so kukahawa kea. Um, and again, many, many of the students uh, that you saw dancing there have all worked on, on mele to be utilized out at for the love of that space and for the love of Aina. Uh, the last slide I'd like to share with you is about uh, us being the hula ki'i. So we physically embodying the, uh, or becoming the hula ki'i. It demands our awareness of our surroundings, our elements, and our attention to our kupula. Our motions, stationary and stance, is enhanced by our facial gestures that help to elevate the story for clarity and intentions, as well as remembering lessons learned. Yeah. So, one of the, one of the amazing things about hula ki'i um, that many of us probably have seen I, either images of is is that particular stance that they're in. Uh, the students are are basically in an aiha'a level or, or in a hula noho position and they're not moving from that particular position. Yeah. So this this next mele is is a mele um, hula ki'i mano and again it, it talks about uh, lessons learned. Yeah. Hula ki'i mano is again another kind of mele that, that talks about mating. It talks about um, those kinds of lessons during during the time of the Pua Vili Vili. Uh, what are the things that you, you should and shouldn't do? Yeah. Everybody knows that, or Kupuna, that have shared uh, that kind of thought. When the, the Pua Vili Vili, yeah, when the Mohala Kapua Vili Vili, the Nahu Kamano. So it says when the, the Vili Vili blossoms, then the Mano bites. Yeah, so... During that time, you don't see a lot of, well, well, you should not see a lot of folks out in the ocean um, because it is a time that, that the, uh, of mating season. And so the mano will bite one another. And so if they're biting you, it's not because they like bite you, it's because they like mate with you. That's the only other reason why they're out in the water. Okay? So they think you on, on mano or you shouldn't be out there. Yeah? So this mele again is about lessons learned. Yeah. So I'm going to stop share, pull up the other one, and and hopefully this video plays okay. All right. Here you go. Sharing. Okay. Ikike ike oko mikae. You guys can see? Okay. So again, this is a, a thank you to, to um, again, our dear friend, uh, Kumu Maile from Hula Preservation Society. Um, back in 2017, we did a, a, uh, an amazing uh, presentation with uh, Mauliola, Kumu Auli'i, Maile, myself, and our Haumana on, on the different varieties of hula ki'i from those traditions. And um, quite an amazing turnout, and really, really love that particular evening. So, this is the, the Hula Ki'i Mano. So, earlier we were talking about Hula Ki'i and the forms of styles of Hula Ki'i. Uh, this particular one that we will end with this evening um, talks about lessons, and it talks about the, the ability to listen to those lessons. Because if we don't listen and we're not uh, you know, ever vigilant about those kinds of lessons, then um, we're the ones to blame. We never listen to those kupuna. So, 
particular chapter is known as Aure, 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 and consumed by the Malo. It's the Mele of Aloha. Then the time is of the Pua Bini Bini, and then it begins to blossom. Uh, we understand that the, the Mano are looking for a mate, and uh, in those times we don't necessarily go Aukai. Uh, so, whenever you see that Pua Bini Bini blossoming, uh, you might want to stay out of the water for a little bit. Yeah? Uh, so, Eina Kahula Ki, Aue Kahula Ki Mano Uye. Makoka. Okay, so hey, hello. we are uh, at the end of this particular uh, evening on Kula Ki, but I also wanted to give an opportunity for, for questions if you folks had any. Um, also, we have some, some real amazing special uh, friends and guests that are here. Um, that we could ask them as well. I believe we have um, Moliola. Is she still here? Moliola Cook. Aya oimani i. Oha She may have had to go to class. Aole pirikia. But I wanted to go ahead and, and put it out for everybody if you folks had any particular questions that that you might have uh, that Kumu can answer. Um, I'll be more than happy to. to uh. Okay, no more questions. Awesome. Okay. No, Leila, um, I believe, Auntie, you have put out a, a uh, on chat something for them to be able to fill out. Is that correct? Yes, Kumu. Okay, yes. Ikino. Ikino. The link is there for the survey, so go check it out. Okay. Thank you. So I am uh, just wanted to let you know about this particular um, this particular makana. Is uh, Kumu is actually working on on twenty five um, small hula ki'i that will be given out to to each of those that are going to be participating in the survey. So only get 25 um, uh, available. So those 25 that hurry up and fill out that survey, um, I'll go ahead and get them out to Auntie Tama so she can get it out to you folks. Okay. Um, and and it's just a, a kind of a, a nice reminder of our time together to be able to discuss about uh, hula ki'i, about, um, you know, 
um, about Mo'olelo and the sharing of, of Mo'olelo from each of our Moku. Yeah? So I hope you folks enjoy your evening tonight on, on Hula Ki'i, the presentation on Hula Ki'i. And I, I am open to any, any um, questions that you might have. Uh, and if not, you can always um, email Auntie Thelma or Oha and they can send the questions over to Kumu and I can be more than happy to answer them. Yeah. Kumu. Hey, oh. Aloha, this is Manny. Hey, aloha Manny. Pea oi. Mai kai. Mai kai. I remember seeing that picture of uh, Pa'akaula. Yeah. And, very... and you, you mentioned that the, the derivation or origination came from Kauai during the time of Komu Ali. Yeah, the um the sure historical, which... Okay. No, the historical accounts of around 1820 is, is when those historical accounts of Hula Ki'i are, are, are starting to be notated. And I'm sure uh, prior to prior to that, uh, there were Hula Ki'i around. Okay, all right, good. Any other questions? You mentioned about the Smithsonian, the two pictures? Yes. Are we aware where they came from, from whom, where? Yeah, I'm not, no, I'm not too aware. Of, um, I haven't seen them personally, um, but I believe um, Maile Lu and Mauliola uh, were able to go ahead and see them up close and personal. Um, and they, they may have some answers that we can probably get and then we can forward that information over to you. Okay, thank you, Kumo. Have a nice evening. Aloha. Mahalo, Manny. Any other questions? Aloha, Kapuna Ai. Aloha. Uh, this, this is um, Analu Akao. But this question is to um, Anaketama. Is, is this video or, or is this webinar going to be available for future viewing? If we wanted to look at it again for as a resource? Yes. It's available. We can Mahalo. mail you the um, the link. Okay. Mahalo. Anytime. Yeah, good question. Um, I know there's, there's a lot of information that goes through, and sometimes some of it gets uh, goes like this, and and so always good to be able to review that information. Yeah. Plus, I in California too. So. Oh. <laughs> oh, so, oh, still early over there. <laughs> Mahalo. Send, us Mahalo your, send us your link and then we can uh, give you the survey list. It has the three recordings on it. Mahalo. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mahalo Nui, everyone, for, for your time and your energy tonight uh, to, to the continued work of Hula Ki'i practitioners found throughout all of Hawaii'i um, and, and a really an amazing art form that that continues to enhance imagination in hula, uh, as well as uh, uh, the hula art form itself. And so we're, we're very fortunate uh, to have these hula ki'i practitioners around uh, for many generations to come to, to help um, continue the practice, to help pass it on, and, and to help make future practitioners in hula ki'i. Yeah. Mahalo nui. Mahalo, Kumo. Hi. Mahalo. Hi, Mahalo, Yoko. If no other if questions. No other question. Mahalo. Yeah. Hello, yeah. <laughs> Auntie. Aloha, thank Mahalo, you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I had, to, had a question. Mahalo. And did somebody had one question? I thought I heard somebody said they had a question, yeah. Oh, I'm not sure. I thought I heard one. Kipukai, you had a question? No, I was just saying mahalo. Oh, okay, mahalo. I, this is something totally new 
for me and I'm very interesting. Very oh, Minkai. Minkai. Yeah, mahalo. Hi, aloha, we home. We home. Mahalo, Kapono. Kapono, ai. Mahalo. Hi, mahalo nui, o ai, Thank you very much uh, for allowing me to be on tonight and I uh, wish you folks a really great evening and I look forward to, to um, getting those those Beautiful 25 hula ki'i out to those that would love one. Okay. Nalela, ki aloha nui oko apau. Aloha. Kui hao.